Hi, this is Trey Pass. I'm going to do a reaction and review of Mr. Nightmare. This is three true summertime horror stories. You know, I love Mr. Nightmare, so let's do my reaction and review of this. I'll be right back. Put my headphones in. Okay, here we go, right now. Go. Summertime horror stories. Story one, two, and three. <laughs> Story one. My girlfriend of seven years and I rented a beach house Airbnb in the Hamptons on Long Island in 2018. Okay. My girlfriend's name is Alicia. The house was very secluded, and it literally sat right on the beach, like back door led to the dunes. All right. It was also more or less a completely private beach during the day, except for the occasional locals going for walks or jogs along the dunes. We were there for three days and two nights. Okay. During the daytime, for the most part, we'd lay in the sand with drinks, mm -hmm. or we'd jump in the pool in the backyard of the house. Mm -hmm. The first night, we went to some local bars to drink a little bit, then went back to the house to relax and watch a movie. Okay. The second day there, like I said, we basically did the same thing as the first day, only this time we hopped in the pool first before going to lay on the beach to dry mm -hmm. off. The house was absolutely gorgeous, a fantasy home for Alicia and I. Woods surrounding the house, pool in the backyard, and beach ten steps from the back door. It all seemed like it was going to be a fantastic weekend getaway. Okay. We stayed on the beach for many hours, until around maybe like four or five. Right as we started packing up and I stood up, I looked at the house, at one of the windows specifically, and I thought for sure I could see someone standing at the window, looking down at me. Oh, Jesus. The sun was kind of creating a glare on the window at its current position, so I couldn't tell 100% if my eyes were playing tricks on me. I grabbed Alicia's shoulder and pointed up at the window. Do you see that? I asked. When she said, see what? I could see that whatever I thought I saw didn't seem to be there anymore. Uh -oh. I told her to keep packing up while I ran back to the house and up the stairs to the bedroom window where I thought I saw someone or something. The room was empty though, as was the closet under the bed and the rest of the upstairs rooms. Okay. The only noise was the sound of the window air conditioners in various rooms, and then the door opening downstairs. It was Alicia arriving with the stuff, so I chalked it up as seeing things after lying in the sun for hours. Okay. That night, we hit a couple of the same bars again. We stayed out later this night because it would be our last night there. Okay. I think we got back around 11. Upon entering the living room, we tried to flick the lights on, but they wouldn't. Then we noticed all the digital clocks from the cable boxes were off too, so the power was out. I looked around for a circuit box, but couldn't find one. It was way too late to call the homeowner. All that would happen is we'd miss out on watching a movie that night. We were tired anyway, so we just went upstairs using our phones to provide us enough light to prevent us from falling on our faces up the stairs. Okay. We went to bed, and the alcohol in Alicia's system helped her knock out pretty quickly. But then, I sat up when I felt like I heard something from outside of the room. Oh. I looked at the doorway. Someone walked past the doorway in the hall. Oh. I covered my mouth with my hands to prevent my squeal of horror from being heard. Oh my god. I lifted myself over Alicia to get off the bed and run to lock the door. The second I locked it, there were knocks on the other side. Oh. Someone said... It's the landlord. I came to fix the power. Oh. I didn't believe it for a second. Oof. The knocks turned to more aggressive bangs, and the door started to shake as the man on the other side started twisting and shaking the doorknob. My girlfriend woke up and started to scream as she realized what was going Get on. Get a weapon. I screamed, call the cops to her, and I think this caused the man on the other side to stop. The next thing that happened after waiting in silence and fear was the sound of the police officers downstairs. They had entered the house through the front door that was apparently left open. The police investigated, took a report, and said they'd let the local media know of the incident. Oh. They even helped us find the circuit box and restore power. Oh. The next day, we left first thing in the morning, and on the ride home, I called the landlord, who said he hadn't even been near the Hamptons for a few weeks. Oh. Oh my God. Story two. The story I'm going to be telling you took place around four years ago as of today. I haven't told many people about this story because it's something I try to forget. 
here's my story. It was a Monday evening, 4th of July. I just finished sophomore year in high school. I was invited to a few 4th of July parties. My parents grounded me a few days prior, so I couldn't go to any of them. Uh -huh. However, I live in a neighborhood that's very connected, so my neighbors had a party outside in the cul-de-sac. My parents forced me to come outside for mm. it. I'm not extremely awkward or anything, but I hate talking to older adults because I never know what to talk about. <laughs> Luckily, I had a friend named Eli who lived in the same area, so I called him up and we hung out at the party. After a few minutes at the party, we got extremely bored. It just wasn't fun for us because there was no one our age in the area. We talked a little bit. Then the Eli asked, doesn't Savannah live like down this street? We should go door ditch her. <laughs> I agreed to Eli's suggestion, and we were on our way down the street. To clarify, Savannah is that extremely popular girl that every guy has a crush on in high school. It was awkward enough that we were neighbors, uh -huh. but her dad was also my dentist. Uh -huh. We made our way down the street. The sun began setting quickly. Eli and I made jokes about dumb things we found funny at the time. Being honest, we were both pretty nerdy our sophomore year. Uh -huh. I eventually asked Eli if he knew where the house was located because I had never been to Savannah's house before. After scanning the whole area of houses, Eli began pointing to my west. He was pointing at a big house that was pretty complex. We lived in a mediocre area in Michigan. Hmm. Houses like this one were rare here. Anyway, we sneakily approached the house. It was only to our surprise that no one was home. No cars in the driveway, the lights were off, nothing. We both began observing the house. We agreed that she probably went on a trip with her family. I suggested that we come back next week and do the door bridge. <laughs> Eli didn't listen though. He kept staring at the house. He approached the front door. Eli, let's go, I yelled. <laughs> he told me to be quiet as he opened the front door. His face lit up. They left the door unlocked. What so? Eli suggested that we explore the house and that it would be quick. Why? Being the curious teens we were, we entered the house. It was dark and extremely cold. We both split up, exploring the enormous split house. Split up? I went into every room of the house and began to feel extremely guilty because that was considered breaking into someone's house. Yes. Also, we were invading the family's privacy. After a few minutes of contemplation, Eli began screaming. I walked over to the screams and found Eli. He was leaving what I believe was Savannah's room. Why are you screaming? I asked. Huh. He began walking me to the nearest bathroom. He locked the door and started whispering, there was someone watching me in the closet. Oh. I tried reassuring him the person was probably a family member who thought we were breaking into the place. He immediately responded, why would he be hiding in a girl's room then? From what I saw, the room's walls were entirely white, the bed covers were white, and it just overall gave off a girl's room vibe. Okay. I became suspicious myself. That was when we began to hear footsteps approach the bathroom door. Oh. We tried listening, but the walking seemed to stop. I told Eli to be quiet. Someone started mumbling something outside the door. Shortly after, there was knocking on the door. It started out soft. As it continued, it got louder and louder. Uh oh It sounded as if someone was trying to break down the door. It started becoming a scene out of a horror movie when the person started screaming. Oh. It was a man's scream. I turned around and panically tried to open the window behind uh -oh. us. It was bolted down. Oh, jeez. I thought we were dead. Yeah. There was a wrench right next to the toilet, and I used it to destroy the window. Uh -oh. We jumped out of it and fell onto the bushes below. Uh -oh. I still managed to break my ankle, but we ran out of there fast. Man. Both Eli and I were so confused as to who that person was and what their intentions were. Mm -hmm. A few days passed, and the family came back. I couldn't take the guilt anymore. I turned myself into the cops and admitted to breaking ah. my ankle. The cops asked me a few questions. Later, they sat me down with my dentist, or the homeowner. Ah. I began the conversation with, Yes, I'm guilty but the guy hiding in your daughter's closet nearly tried killing me. <laughs> My dentist showed mercy and didn't press charges. Luckily. However, he just started to become anxious as he told me. We never invited anyone to stay at our house. Oh. Story three. I 
used to work at this small sleepaway camp as a counselor. It was my first job when I was 17. It was the most fun I could have at any job that age. Plus, it would get me away from my parents' house for a month. I didn't exactly come from an enviable background. So at this camp, there were five buildings. The boys' dorms, the girls' dorms, the counselors' dorms, the main hall, which we called the shack, and a small bathroom building. In the shack was the cafeteria, main office, and nurses' quarters, where any kids who suffered any kind of injuries would be brought. Kids' curfews would be 9 o'clock. Curfews only meaning they weren't okay. allowed out of the dorm buildings past that time. I made good friends with this guy named Johnny. He was three years older than me, but we got along. It was a Friday night. I remember because I knew it was the start of the weekend. So for fun, Johnny and I went to hang out with these two girl counselors, who I'll leave their names out for privacy <laughs> since I haven't seen them in many years. The four of us went out to the woods to smoke. One of the girls were mid-sentence when all we heard was a crunch of leaves in the vicinity. Surely a footstep. All of our heads turned the same way and at the same time. We all heard it. Then, a few seconds later, there was a blinding oh. flash. We didn't understand at first. Unnerved, all of us cut the smoke set short and exited okay. the woods at an extremely quick pace. Being back on the campgrounds felt a lot safer immediately but we became paranoid that we were being watched by one of the camp supervisors and that the flash was a picture being taken. We would surely okay. get fired if we were caught smoking weed. So in a paranoid panic, we all rushed to our respective dorm buildings. The thing about me when I smoke weed though, I get extremely uh -huh. paranoid and overthink everything. So as I sit in my bed, it ate away at me wondering if it was indeed a camera flash and who took that picture I couldn't take it anymore. I had to go to the shack and see if any of the supervisors were still working and come clean. Every counselor had a key to the building, so I unlocked the door that led to the cafeteria section and the door slammed behind me, echoing into the dark, empty building. The only light was coming from that hallway, which I would take to get to the main office, hoping there would be someone still working. You may think I was crazy to be doing this, but I'm not exaggerating when I say I get paranoid. I really couldn't afford to lose this uh -huh. job over something that wasn't even my idea. However, I would feel out whichever supervisor was on duty and uh -huh. see if they had actually seen what we were doing. As I walked down the hall towards the office, though, I realized quickly that the office light was off. No one was in the building. Just then, I heard the familiar sound of the cafeteria exit door oh. that I had just went through slamming again. Was I seen entering the building? Was I being followed? hid behind the intersecting hallway wall, peeking my head around, waiting to see who would be walking into the hallway. No one ever did, though. But it took me longer than it should have to notice something peering around the doorway to the cafeteria. Oh. It was a person's head. They were doing exactly what I was doing, peering in my direction. When I realized <laughs> this, I didn't care about being quiet anymore. I ran as fast as I could to the nearest exit, feet stomping on the wood flooring. I ran to the counselor dorm, where only three counselors were still chilling in the common area, one of them being Johnny. I told him okay. and only him about what I just witnessed. I didn't know what to think other than I was being followed. I think Johnny could tell I was uh -huh. being a little extra paranoid because I was high, so he told me to just go to my room and lock the door. He made sure to lock the main entrance uh -huh. to the building because I think I scared him too. That night I lay awake for a while, thinking, nervous. So many unanswered questions from one night. The beds in every counselor's room lay right next to a window without blinds, so moonlight would pour in on clear nights, but not on this cloudy night. Huh. It was just pure darkness. Until, however, many hours after laying down, a flash filled my room. Lightning? No. There was no thunder, not even rain. I looked at the window. And all I saw was someone's silhouette out there. When they noticed me, noticed them. I oh. saw their hand making a waving motion at me. That was the last straw. <laughs> I left my room screaming for Johnny. He had already gone to bed at this point, so I banged on his door till he opened up. I told him the man who was following me was at my window, so he went to check with me. Of course. But figures, he was gone. <laughs> Johnny asked me if I was still high. <laughs> I told him not at all, it had been hours. I asked if we should call the cops or something. He said no. 
He told me to sleep on the floor in his room with my blankets if it made me feel better. Loki, I think he wanted me to because he was scared just like I was. I didn't understand why on the surface he was pretending to not take this seriously, given that he uh -huh. saw the first flash in the woods with me. I did sleep in his room, though. I didn't want to sleep alone. I was too terrified. The next day, I went to the main office to talk with one of the supervisors. She didn't really know what to do. She didn't call the police, but she gave me permission to call them if something else happened, for the safety of the children. But nothing happened again. Not uh -oh. until the last day on the job for counselors. This was when the kids had already went home, and it was the day we were supposed to pack up and leave. I woke up to four pictures taped on my window. One zoomed in on me in the woods that night with Johnny and the two girls. A second picture of me sleeping in my bed. A third picture of me entering the shack building that night we smoked, confirming I was being watched and followed. And the fourth picture, a zoom in of my license plate number. I took the photos and showed them to the same supervisor. She kept them for evidence after writing down my whole story, uh -huh. including the smoking weed part. This was many years ago now, and nothing ever happened uh -huh. again. But I was scared to death that the picture of my license plate was some kind of threat that whoever it was would track me. Uh -huh. I still don't know who took those pictures. Uh -huh. I think that was probably one of your counselors. Gotta be somebody, exactly. Somebody messing with you. I don't think that was a stranger. That was somebody messing with you. Anyway, <laughs> those are good stories. Uh, yeah, that last one, I think that was probably got to be either one of his friends messing with him. Exactly. That's just too convenient. Yeah, that that was happening. Somebody, obviously not Johnny because he was with him and the two girls. Uh, it was somebody else, maybe one of the other counselors or something. Somebody just messing with you. Exactly. That's all that was. Somebody just screwing around with you. So that's so you can kind of dismiss. And like I said, he was high, so you were extra paranoid. So, uh I can understand that that first story uh yeah exactly you did the right thing though with um by locking the door because obviously that wasn't the landlord and you did see somebody in that window okay obviously he was trying to get in and i don't know maybe he had a weapon or something and he wanted to rob you or something because obviously why would he knock on the door if it was the landlord you know come on he could go he could call, he would have called you first and told you listen i'm here I'm here to fix the power or whatever. He would have called you. He wouldn't have just showed up like that. That just makes no sense. So obviously that guy was either he probably found, you know, saw when you arrived and figured and what probably watched you and saw your habits. And then he figured out once y'all come back from the house, then he'd rob you or something like that. So obviously that guy was watching you and stuff. So you did the right thing. Although you should have a weapon with you. You had an isolated place by yourself with you and your girl. You have some kind of weapon. This, this, this makes perfect sense just to have some kind of weapon to protect you and your girl because you never know. Like I said, you're in an isolated place and these things happen when you're in an isolated place, okay? So what if the guy had broken the door down? Exactly, what if he broke the door down and broke in? It's just been in you and your, and your girl, you know, or you fighting the guy off and supposedly overpowered you, then you know, it lights out. Now that second story, that was just, that seems like a weird coincidence that you and your friend walked into the house and then he ha he just happened to see somebody in the you know that that was but you never know like maybe somebody was a stalker that was actually stalking the you know stalking the girl you know wanted she's a powerful girl maybe there's somebody there that knew they went out of town and decided to you know ahead of you went to the house and decided to you know maybe he's gonna stalk her room and stuff you know and you know how guys are especially when it comes to hot girls and stuff to do weird things <laughs> and maybe he was gonna you know steal her panties or do some kind of weird stuff in the house and then y'all just happened to walk in <laughs> why well, you know and then just do his plan off and he's if he's complete psycho obviously that's why he's banging on the door <laughs> exactly so and obviously like you said the homeowner didn't know nobody was supposed to be in the house <laughs> so exactly if i was that man i'd make sure you, you gotta watch your daughter because like, especially when you get popular hot you know girls and stuff Guys do weird things for girls, uh, you know, or, or you know, it is girl doesn't even have to be totally hot. Guys just are very weird around women, and <laughs> sometimes some guys are certain or act weird and strange. And it sounds like 
maybe some guy had broken the house before you, just before you. I mean, that's why the door was open and he knew they were out of town and he, and he was in her room, obviously. You never know what he was in that, you know, like I said, stealing panties, doing weird stuff, because, you know, that's how guys are. <laughs> Some guys are really weird when they totally, when they total cycle. And you just happen to be in the house at the same time, which, you know, you know, which is, in a way, it's kind of good that he knows that, and now that he knows that somebody was in his house, so maybe he can beef up security and stuff. And I'd be very, you know, I'd tell my daughter, you know, be extra careful and, you know, maybe give her a taser or something so she can be, because you never know, like I said, he said she was a hot, popular girl. You, you have you have guys that are just like I said. Some guys can be total psychos about about women, and they can you know like I said he could have been stalking her all this time. So so I think the first story was good, and then the second story was even weirder. I think the third story was you know I think that was just probably again like one of the counselors or something messing with him, or maybe it was one of the young kids messing with him. You never know. Yeah. Exactly. Just, that just sounds more like somebody messing with him. Exactly. So I wouldn't worry about that choice as much. I know he's extra paranoid because he was high, but I wouldn't worry about that one so much. But the first and second story, those are good. But I think the first story is the, because like I said, there was actually somebody in the house and he actually tried to fake being the landlord so you could open up the door so he could probably rob you. And you never know, murder, you never know with these psychos. Like I said, the second story could have been a stalker that came to the house when they knew they were out of families out of town, and he wanted to go through the girl's room and stuff. But you know, you know how guys are sometimes. So, and you just happened to be in the house. You came in. He came in after, and he probably heard you and jumped in the closet because he thought he probably thought maybe you were the family coming back or something. But he, then he actually saw you just a regular. You know. But then, but I don't know why he would. You know why he wouldn't just leave. Why he would try to get into the bathroom where you are. That's just, again, you know, that's psycho unto another level. Anyway, let me know what you think of these three stories, these three uh, summertime uh, horror stories. Let me know what you think of them. I'll leave a link to Mr. Nightmare's channel in the description box so you can check them out for yourself. I also have links to my Facebook, my Twitter, my Instagram. Also have a link to my other channel, Paul's, in, Paul's Views and Opinions, in the description box below. You can check those out. Please follow me on social media and check out my other channel. And this is Trey Pastor saying so long and take care.